Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about um, you know, Christ and that um, he is a wonderful counselor. Um, in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, um, it talks about Christ and in, in, in verse 6 it's very interesting, very important. Uh, specifically, it calls Christ um, a number of things, but, but for me, one thing while I was reading this really popped out at me. Uh, is that it called Christ, it called Jesus Christ a wonderful counselor. And when you think about the life of Christ and, and what he preached and what he said uh, and, and, and the advice that he gave to people, um, it's just all wonderful. And he's a counselor not just trying to help you uh, cope with your emotions uh, or just trying to help you deal with your, your trauma or anything that bad that happened in your life, you know, you know, therapists will work to, to help you and to deal with things in your past or to help you have a, a better emotional uh, or, or, or a better life in, in the general sense. But Christ, he's not just trying to help you um, in, in the physical world or in the mental world. Um, he has saved you. Um, he is a counselor for your for your soul. He is a, a counselor for your life. He is a counselor for your entire being, for your entire existence. Um, Christ is the light of the world. And as the light of the world, um, the world was in darkness. The world, you know, the people in the world were lost. They were walking around as blind men, stumbling, stumbling around in the darkness. Uh, but the light showed up and the light was Christ. And, the, and, and, and in Christ, uh, we can know um, that we have salvation in Christ. We know that 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 we um, have a hope, um, and that hope is in Christ and, and what God has done with Christ and and, and putting Him uh, on the cross. So that that is very significant. That is very important. Um, and as a counselor, um, Jesus spoke about many things. He spoke about where to invest your 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 money. Um, so he he's a a financial counselor. Let's start there. He's a financial counselor. Um, he told us not to uh, put our money um, in earthly things, not to hide it on earth or where the, where the moth corrupts, um, you know, um, where, where we can lose it, where it's not stable, where, um, you know, bad things can happen and people can come in and steal. He told us not to invest our money or to store our money on earth but to store it into the kingdom of heaven, to invest into the kingdom of heaven. And in the kingdom of heaven, there will be a day where we receive rewards for what we did in the name of God on earth. Um, and if you stored your money, if you invested into the kingdom of heaven, uh, you will be rewarded for everything that you named, uh, that you did for the kingdom of heaven. Um, and, and so the first thing, <laughs> Christ comes in here, this is really interesting. Wow, this is really significant. I'm really... Um, it's this is mind-boggling like wow but but the first thing we're gonna look at here is that Jesus Christ is a financial counselor all right he's a financial advisor he comes in he tells us listen don't store your money on earth um, you know the, the moth corrupts and you can lose your money and, and you know bad things can happen to your money but invest into the kingdom of heaven you could be like well how do I invest my money in heaven well Jesus said you know you have to you know you you give a cup of of water a cup of cold water to somebody who needs it um you know you feed the poor you take care of the poor you give money you give a dollar or you give a, a homeless man a woman money to buy food um you you invest your money into the church now of course you have to be a cheerful giver the bible makes that very clear that that god loves a cheerful giver um, don't be a bitter giver, because if you're giving however much money you're giving, but you're mad and angry and your heart's not in it, well, well, God's not happy with that. Um, so you have to be a cheerful giver. You have to want to give. And if you believe in the name of Christ and what he has done for you and how he has saved you, you should have no problem with giving to the church. Um, I'm not saying to take, you know, all that you have and throw it into the basket, but but in accordance with your heart, be a cheerful giver and give what's on your heart to give. Um, and, and that let that be be between you and God. Um, so that's the first thing I'll say. Um, so Christ is a financial advisor, a financial counselor. Um, he told us not to invest, not to hide our money on earth, but to store it in the kingdom of heaven. Um, and, is, and, and, and again, storing your money into the kingdom of heaven is investing in the things of God, um, taking care of God's sheep, feeding his, his lamb, 
um, and, 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 you know, feeding his lambs, that that's very important. That's how you invest your money. And, and, and Christ gives great financial advice. He's a great financial counselor. Uh, the reason why he's a great financial counselor is because the money that you invest in heaven, it does not perish. It's not temporal. It's eternal. So an investment of that magnitude is something that, that you'll be able to, to reap the rewards for all of eternity. So that's very significant. Um, then you know, Christ gives us <laughs> financial. So he gives us financial advice. Um, he's a counselor in that sense. He's also a counselor um, in, in, our, in our lives, in our, in our um, romantic lives, in our tax lives. You know, Christ gave advice and he counseled us in all types of things. Um, he counseled us in hypocrisy. He told us not to be hypocrites, not to be um, false people. You know, you pray loudly in the streets um, um, so that people can hear you. Um, but your heart is, is as cold and dark um, as a rock. You know, uh, there's no life within you. Um, Christ gave us you know, um, family advice on how to treat family and neighborly advice and how to treat other people. He told us that the greatest commandment is to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. So he gave us advice and counsel on how to treat other people and how to exist with other people. Um, and that, you know, when you when you love God, you have to love other people. And, and one way to love other people is to first, we have to love God. So, so God, Christ gave us um, advice and how to to live and to exist and to um, to to have a relationship with the father and, and the way that you have a relationship with the father is by loving him is by bringing it with everything that you got so he gave us um, financial advice he gave us um, romantic advice in our love life he told us to, to stay away from sexual immorality All right, let's get back to that real quick he told us to stay away from sexual immorality you know if a man looks at a woman with lust um, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Um, so he gave us advice in, in, in our romantic lives. You know, again, you know, cheating, adultery, it starts, it doesn't start in the physical form. A lot of people, you know, uh, when somebody cheats on you, when your significant lover goes her separate ways or, or he goes his separate ways or does something with somebody else, it, it, most people say, well, cheating or adultery becomes, in, it starts in the physical form. Something physically has to happen. But no, Christ says it, it's all in the, the mind. It's all in the emotions. So as soon as somebody has an, a, an emotional tie to somebody, as soon as somebody has a, a lustful idea about somebody else and, and, and they're, they're, they're attached to it, they're, they're, you know, saturating in that lust. Uh, you know, they look at the, a woman with lust. They look at a, you know, a man with lust. You know, you let yourself lost in that. You've already committed adultery because, you know, it all starts in the mind. It all starts in the emotions. It all starts in the feelings. When your feelings are, are in it, you know, sooner or later, you know, the, your body goes. So, you know, if, if your girl leaves you, your wife leaves you, um, her mind left you first, you know, um, because before somebody cheats, they always, the cheating always starts in the mind, you know, when the mind goes to somebody else or when the mind is, is, is stuck in thinking about somebody else, you've already lost the war. Um, and, and, and Christ was very specific about this. So um, Christ gives us financial ad advice. He gives us romantic advice. Um, he gives us uh, uh, advice on, on how to connect with God the Father and how to love him with all our hearts, all our souls, all our minds, and all our strengths and to love our neighbor um, as ourselves. So he gave us, he also gave us their um, advice on how to treat other people. In this world, you know, a lot of people are selfish. A lot of people only care about themselves. You care about your money. You care about your fame. You care about your clout. You care about people seeing you. Um, you care about um, the things of the world. But God, but, but the God said, you know, we have to deny ourselves. We have to deny ourselves and pick up our cross. You know, Christ is very specific about this. You have to stop feeding your carnal man. People feed their carnal man drugs, sex, adultery, um, whatever your stomach wants, whatever your body wants, um, whatever, you know, whatever you want in the flesh. Um, you just give in to it. You don't think about it. You know, a lot of people nowadays are impulsive. A lot of people now only care about themselves. If, if somebody else dies, you know, it's just whatever. As long as, as long as I'm safe, as long as I have my money, as long as I'm happy, as long as I have my drugs or, or my fun, my pleasure. You know, a man who loves pleasure 
Um, it leads to, to poverty. It leads to nothingness. Um, and we have to understand this, that, that there is joy in Christ and, and there's a time for everything. But when your life, your whole purpose of existence is for pleasure, it only leads to destruction. You have to understand. The Bible is very serious about that. You know, people are, who are hedonistic and drunks, um, people who are not sober minded. Um, you know, Christ keeps telling us this again and again, and it's not just to, to people who don't believe, it's to Christians, Christians who are hypocrites, they speak loudly, they speak with their chest, they're bold, they're loud, and they're, they're, they're always ready to, to show their, their religiosity, like the Pharisees, they're, already, they're, all, they're always ready to scream out and show how, how, how refined they are um, in, in the word, but yet their hearts are cold and dark as rocks. Um, so you have to really understand it. So, so Christ is a counselor in the sense he died for our sins. He saved our souls. He not only saved our souls, but, but he gave us advice on how to store our money. He gave us advice in our romantic lives. He gave us advice on how to, to connect with God, how to follow God. Um, you know, when you go towards, listen, the, the greatest counsel session, you know, uh, the greatest sit down therapy moment counsel session that you could have or have is an old oh, crack open your bible go to matthew 5 6 and 7 and have a conversation with jesus and jesus lays into you all the things that you need to look at you know you, you start with the beatitudes and the beatitudes gives you you know a good wallop you know the beatitudes tell you who who gets into heaven who are the people of god when it's talking about the poverty of spirit when it's talking about you know mourning um those who mourn they will be comforted you know jesus is a is a comforter he's a counselor um god is a comforter god is a counselor you know the, the bible really tells us that the qualities of christ the qualities of the holy spirit the qualities of god who they are how they move in righteousness and, and all the uh, qualities and, per, and, and and attributes of god himself and, and, and christ as a member of the godhead uh, we understand closely that he is the, a wonderful counselor because he counseled us while he was on earth throughout his ministry he counseled us on how to live how to exist how to move with one another and not be selfish and, and to not you know to, to not forsake one another because the, the greatest thing, one, one of the, an amazing thing within the Bible is that when God asked Cain, you know, what, what had happened, what happened to your brother? Cain was like, am I my brother's keeper? I mean, that that is chilling. Why is that chilling? That's because Cain is pretty much saying, I don't care about my brother. I'm not my brother's keeper. But, but, but Jesus is telling us that, you know, we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. Cain did not love his neighbor his very own brother. He did not love his very own brother as himself. That's some that's some great old con, um, counseling right there. Jesus is saying that you know we we need to love one another. We need to care about one another. So your brother or sister in Christ or, or just ordinary people, normal people, you have to, there has to be something in you that care about other people's lives, not just for competition. Because a lot of times Christians want to compete with one another. It's like, I, I want to make more money than that brother. I want to make more money than that sister. I want to be lifted up more than that person. I want to be exalted more than that person. Uh, the way that we're supposed to do it, the way that we're supposed to coexist with one another, when God lifts somebody up, we're supposed to rejoice and, and honestly be happy and glad to see the work of God in that person's life. But Christians don't do that. They don't rejoice. They're not happy. They're, they're not, you know, um, they don't have that zeal for when God is working in somebody's life. When God's working in somebody's life, that doesn't mean you're in a line. That doesn't mean, you know, he's not working in your life. God is great and, and, and he is infinite. He can work. He's working in everybody's life at the same time. Man, that, ooh, that's a good one right there. He's working at, in everybody's life at the same time. Everybody is, you know, every single person is on a different path. Is, is, we're all on the same. Let's get this straight. We're all on a narrow road, those of us who, you know, believe within Christ. But we have to understand in our journey in this narrow road, we, we have to develop our, our personal relationship with God. And God is, is work. Different people are at different levels. Okay, different people are at different levels. There have people that have been walking with God um, for for ten years, for twenty years, and there's there's some people that have started walking with God yesterday. Um, and so you know your your faith is going to be built over time. The more you read, you know, faith comes by hearing. The more you read your Bible, the more you seek God, the more you get to know Him, the more you know about Him. 
Um, and, and the more he counsels you, you know, when Christ comes into your life, he doesn't sit on the sidelines. He's your, he's an active coach. He's an active coach telling you how to live. He, I mean, when you look at, at, at the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you know, Jesus is telling us, oh, this is how you need to act. This is how you need to treat other people. This is how you need to give to the poor. This is how you, you need to live your life. This is what you need to recognize about the people who are going to heaven. You know, you need to recognize your poverty, your spirit. Jesus is like, the, like he's like this coach. He's like pulling you in. You're in this huddle. And he's like, listen, you need to do this. This is the, this is the light. This is the right. This is righteousness right here. Um, so he's an active counselor. I mean, he, he came down to earth to get in our faces and really tell us what righteousness is. I mean, he's like, man, they need light. And so as the light, he came down and gave us the light. You know, the, the gospel is the naked truth of God. And, and Christ did, you know, very clear. You know, he just told us what we needed to hear. So we need to book a council session, uh, a meeting with Christ, um, and really understand the message that he has for us. Because he has a, you know, everybody is different. Everybody is, is on a narrow road, but at different levels. And wherever you are, Christ will come into your life and he will start to, to teach you, to counsel you, um, to speak with you. Sometimes you just need to, to find a place to sit and pray and ask God for his counsel so he can speak to you and talk to you and, and lead you and direct you and drive you uh, where you need to be, where you need to go. The same way a person will spend a lot of money to sit with a therapist or a counselor to get some advice or, or to get their life fixed is the same way that Christ, when he comes into your life, he doesn't just sit on the sideline. He doesn't just say you're saved and he's gone. No, he's with you. He's in your life um, and, and he wants to speak to you. You need to go in prayer. You need to seek his presence because he will counsel you in every single area of your life. Because there's not one thing, I mean, Jesus talked about taxes, he talked about um, marriage, he talked about giving, he talked about money, he talked about every single thing that you could think of. That's why he's a wonderful counselor, because he didn't just talk about the body, he didn't just talk about the mind, he didn't just talk about um, um, the way that we live, um, he talked about the soul, and, and ultimately he gave his life, I mean, he's such a great counselor. That he gave his life for us. Now that is a wonderful counselor. Who who has a a counselor that's prepared to put put his or her life on the line for you? You know he he was a rabbi, a teacher, a master, a counselor. Man. So. You know, that's why he's a wonderful counselor, because he's a counselor that doesn't that isn't just because there are some people that 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 separate. There's different types of counselors, counselors for everything in the world, but but Christ, he, you know, he dive he 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 covers it all, every area of your life. He'll counsel you in every single area of your life and even and most importantly most importantly he gave his own life to save your soul so we have to understand why he's a wonderful counselor um he's just yeah so book an appointment that's that's all i have to say book an appointment because he he has advice he has some words for you 